Got another redox titration question for you to try. So this one's number 10. It's another tricky one, so I'm classing it as an A star question. So good luck with this, and as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So I've done, as usual, a little diagram there to try and visualize all this information. So I'll just quickly talk through that, and then we'll go through the calculation. So they've taken 25 cm cubed sample of river water. Obviously, that's got that dissolved oxygen in it. And they've shaken it with um, aqueous Mn2 plus ions and alkali, so hydroxide ions. That's generated this precipitate, this yellow precipitate or pale brown precipitate of MnOH3. And obviously, that's the equation that goes with that. They've then reacted it with an excess of Ki. And that's turned the MnOH3 into MnOH2, so it's still got precipitate. But it's generated aqueous iodine, which is then determined by titrating with sodium thiosulfate of that concentration. And that was the titra. So first thing I'm going to do is calculate the moles of thiosulfate ions in the sodium thiosulfate. So that's just concentration times volume in decimeters cubed. 2.46 times 10 to the minus 5. And then using the equation for the titration, we can see that the moles of iodine present will be half that. So that's 1.23 times 10 to the minus 5. The moles of iodine in the titration are those moles of iodine there that were generated by this reaction, this reaction here. And so we just apply that mole ratio and we double back to get the moles of MnOH3. So we get back to that 2.46 times 10 to the minus 5. And now we need to do a very similar thing. So we've just established the moles of the MnOH three times. They are those there in that very first equation. So now we can apply this mole ratio to get the moles of oxygen that were in the 25 cm cubed sample of river water. So that's going to be a quarter of the moles of MnOH3. So that's coming out at 6.15 times 10 to the minus 6. Next thing I've done is worked out the concentration of oxygen in moles per decimeter cubed. So we know that there's that many moles in 25 cm cubed. So a decimeter cubed is 40 times that volume. So I'm just multiplying the moles in 25 by 40. So that's the concentration of oxygen in moles per decimeter cubed. And then I just need to multiply by the MR of O2 to get the grams per decimeter cubed. So that's coming out at 0.007872 grams per decimeter cubed. Multiply by 1,000, puts it into milligrams. So our final answer is 7.872 milligrams per decimeter cubed. Next thing, we've just got to make a comment on whether there's enough dissolved oxygen in the river water for the fish to survive. Well, the answer is yes, because the 7.872 milligrams per decimeter cube we've just calculated is greater than five, which is the limit. And so therefore there is enough. Part B now, so a bit of an educated guess this one really. So if you think about the atoms involved, um, we've got nitrogen, we've got oxygen, obviously there's iodine as well present, but iodine's far too heavy to have anything like an MR of 30 grams per mole, because iodine itself is 126.9. So if you just take one nitrogen, which has an MR of 14, and one oxygen, which has got an MR of 16, you get 30. So the formula of the colourless gas must be NO. And then for the last part, we've got to write this equation for the oxidation of aqueous iodide ions by the aqueous nitrate 3 ions. Got some information there that hydroxide ions are also produced in this reaction. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to actually split it into the two half equations and then I'm going to combine them to come up with the overall redox reaction. So we'll deal with the iodine one first. So iodide ions are oxidized to iodine. Got that information there. So we'll turn that into a half equation. So we'll need a two there to balance the atoms. We've got two minus charge on the left. We've got no charge on the right. So we need to put two electrons on the right and that sorts out the charge. So that's the oxidation reaction. And then for the other half equation, so this is going to be the reduction reaction, we're just using this information here as a starting point. So NO2 minus is going to NO. 
Hydroxide ions are going to be involved as well, but they'll come in in a moment. So we'll start with the oxidation number for the nitrogen in, in both species. So nitrogen starts off at plus three. We're told that in that name there. And it's going to plus two. So it's only changed by one. So that means one electron must have been gained. We'll now deal with the charge. So we've got an overall charge on the left of two minus. We've got no charge on the right, so we're going to need to put two hydroxide ions on the right to get the charges the same. And all we need to do now is sort out the remaining atoms. So if you just use the hydrogens to get your H2O count in, two H's, so we obviously just need an H2O here. If you just check as well, the oxygens are fine. One, two, three, one, two, three. So yeah, that's fine. And all we need to do now is just add these two half equations together, but we need the electrons to cancel. So obviously they won't unless we multiply this one by two first. So there's the answer there.